Okay, well, I am I am very excited about our program today. Uh, I am going to let uh, Jason Tuggle do the introductions and Brian again while I get everybody muted, then watch for that uh, that host control to be turned over to you. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Well, hey, everyone. I uh, want to take a moment to introduce Brian Charles. Uh, Brian's one of the pastors here at Mount Zion Wesleyan Church. Uh, he is our uh, creative arts director, and um, he helps us with uh, communicating to our people. We're, we're um, a fairly large church. We're a church of just over a thousand people, and so uh, one of the challenges we have often is uh, getting the word out to everyone about things that are going on and doing that creatively uh, and efficiently. And um, and so Brian uh, is involved with so much of that and so much of um, creativity here at our church from um, lighting design and stage design and uh, all different artistic elements, graphic design for everything that we do and maintaining our web page and all that kind of stuff. Um, one thing that uh, our Rotary District asks us to do every year is to do a presentation uh, on social media and why it's important for Rotary and uh, for clubs like ours. And so since that's something that uh, a world that Brian lives in and specializes in so well, I have asked him to share with us um, the value and importance of, ro of social media. Uh, for Rotary and for um, so many of you guys are business leaders and community leaders in different ways. Uh, so just the value and importance of uh, social media. So, um, yeah, without further ado, here's here's Brian Charles. Hey, thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks, Jason, for that uh, very, very very kind introduction. <laughs> um, uh, really glad to be here today and um, to talk uh, for a little bit for about the next 15 or 20 minutes or so just about social media. Um, I think we all know social media is a really big animal. It's, it, it's an animal. There are multiple platforms and um, there's a lot to it. So I was telling Jason earlier, we're really going to kind of be focusing on like a, uh, like a 30,000 foot level looking down. Um, there is a lot that you can drill down into with social media um, that we could spend literally days and days on. Um, but since we've only got about 15, 20 minutes, um, we'll do kind of a, a, a top-down approach and really look at things from a, um, a bird's eye view, really, really high up. So um, why social media is important and then um, just how, uh, you know, how impactful it can be uh, for Rotary and also for your business um, as a business leader. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to share my screen here. Uh, can everybody see that okay? Okay, perfect. Um, so just going to talk about the role of, of social media just a little bit. Um, kind of the first slide I wanted to share with you guys. I'm a, I'm a very visual person, so um, I hope the slides are okay. Uh, it's always helpful for me when I uh, see graphs and pictures and all that good stuff. Um, kind of looking at Facebook specifically, I know we mentioned there are multiple different platforms that, you know, people and businesses can be involved on. Um, Facebook and Instagram are kind of the top two. Um, looking at Facebook specifically, though, just over the last 10 years, um, currently, there are approximately 1.8 billion users who are active uh, each day on Facebook. And that is, that is a significant majority, um, or not a majority, that is a significant um, uh, percentage of the world's population. It's kind of hard to believe that that many people in our world are active on Facebook on a daily basis. Um, but that's it. And so if there was kind of ever any doubt that social media is um, kind of here and it's here to stay, you know, you can look at that, look at that graph right there. Um, and you can see as users continue to rise quarter over quarter, uh, year after year, social media is kind of here to stay and it's not really going anywhere. Platforms may change, things may shift, 
Um, you know, people may move from primarily being on Facebook to primarily being on Instagram. TikTok is really huge right now, especially with the younger folks. Um, but social media is here to stay. And so it's important that um, I think for Rotary as a whole, and then also for businesses in general, to really take advantage of, uh, of being on social media. So one of the things I want to talk about, talk about really quick is uh, just a concept of branding and advertising. So with regards to social media, I think a lot of times we think it's easy to fall into a place, um, at, you know, for businesses, even for, for us as a, as a church, it's easy to fall into a place where we say social media is just our place where we communicate a lot of information to people about here's what's happening. Here's the date for this. Here's the date for this. Here's the date for that. And it's, it's very easy to kind of fall into that place. But when we fall into only doing that, it, we really sort of um, miss the opportunity that's really there for social media. And so I want to talk just a little bit, like I said, about branding um, versus advertising. So at first glance, you know, branding and advertising, they kind of appear to be the same thing. I've heard people when they're talking about branding and advertising, um, I've, I've heard them use those words inter, interchange, interchangeably. I'm not sure if that's even a word, but um, they've used those words describing the exact same thing. Um, and they're very similar and they, they really do work in tandem. They work together, but they have some really important differences that I just want to hit on really quickly. Um, a brand, as you see there, a brand is who you are and the type of business or organization that you are. So, for example, um, if we just if we look at at Rotary, you know, one of the things that I was looking at, um, I was just looking at some of the language on uh, Rotary's website, and one of the things that's talked about is to um, to for everyone to work together to see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change um, across the globe in our communities and in ourselves. So that's the brand of, of, of sort of who Rotary is. We, we are an organization, right, that wants to create lasting change. We want to promote peace and integrity and advance world understanding. We want to create lasting change. So that's really your brand, an organization that impacts our community, that creates lasting change. Um, so branding asks the question, how do I want someone to feel when they interact with my business or with my organization? Um, what is my business or organization's brand? That would be the question that you would ask. For us as a church, you know, one of the things um, that we want people to feel when they are, are a part of thing that we would do as a church, we want them to feel welcomed. We want them to feel like they are a part of the family. We want them to feel like this is, you know, a group of people that will not judge you. They, we want them to feel like everything that we do, we really do with excellence. Um, we want people to experience um, that we are, that we sacrificially give. Those are the things about us that we want people to, um, feel when they are involved with our church. And so the question that we might ask for Rotary is, how do you want someone to feel when they interact with Rotary? Um, or if you are a business, let's say you own a, a coffee shop in, in, uh, in Thomasville, how do you want someone to feel when they interact with your business? When they come into your business, how do you want them to feel? Um, advertising is communicating what it is that we have to offer. Um, so advertising sort of asks the question, you know, how can we paint a picture of what a customer will experience if they interact with us? So advertising is really painting a picture of how someone interacts with your brand, if that makes sense. Um, and so when advertising kind of correctly reflects our brand, um, trust is built, right? Um, one of the, one of the worst things that, that, you, that I, I've seen businesses do is 
um, it may be a business is, is one thing, you know, let's, let's say for example, uh, let's say for example, that, uh, McDonald's, uh, who sells coffee started using imagery and videos of baristas at Starbucks, right. Um, for their advertising, um, they would be painting a picture that their brand is a very, very different thing than it actually is. Someone would walk into a McDonald's expecting to um, experience what they would experience at a Starbucks and would probably be <laughs> very disappointed. So trust is broken at that point. And so when advertising and branding really connect and when they really, um, when they really work well together, then trust is built with uh, your uh, with your potential customers or people who would interact with your organization. One of the greatest opportunities that you have with social media is to, um, in, in painting a picture, is in telling the story of your business or your organization. Um, this is where social media is so incredibly powerful because there's such an opportunity to do this. And I've got a couple of of examples that just from real world businesses that we're all very familiar with of, uh, of businesses who do a really great job telling their story. So um, through social media, you know, there is a unique opportunity to, to tell the story or advertise um, about who you are, um, which is your brand uh, as a business or organization. And so uh, one great example of, of this is Starbucks. You know, I think we all know Starbucks brand isn't just about coffee. It's just not. Um, if we think that Starbucks is only selling coffee, we're very, very wrong. Um, Starbucks is selling an environment and they are selling an experience, right? Um, and so that's sort of their, their brand. Their brand isn't just, hey, here's a Here's a really expensive cup of coffee, right? That's not the only thing that Starbucks is doing. Um, a great example of this is this, you know, on December 27th, uh, they posted a video on their Instagram um, about a nine-year-old boy, his name is Cole. And so Cole is going through chemotherapy um, and every time he's about to go for a treatment, he goes through the drive-through at Starbucks and he wants to, um, he wants to get a pep talk from his favorite barista, Eddie. And so um, you, can, you can go to Starbucks' Instagram. They posted this video. It's an incredible video. And what's amazing about this is this is a video, not that Starbucks shot. This is a video that Cole's mom shot because of how much it means to her that this barista um, every time he every time Cole comes through the drive through before his chemotherapy treatments, um, Eddie really pumps him up and says, you know, you've got this. You've got this, Cole. You've got this, buddy. Um, and so what's interesting about this, you know, I think for most of us, we look at that and we think, wow, like that's that's awesome. What a what a great story. Um, Starbucks is doing a great job of telling the story um, of their business or organization are telling the story of their brand. And so what's really interesting about this video with regards to social media and how social media can be really impactful is that this video specifically was viewed over 946,000 times. And on average, a typical video that Starbucks might post of like a coffee cup or, you know, a new drink or something like that, it gets around 100,000 views. Um, so, so nearly 10 times the views for a, a video that very effectively told the story of Starbucks's brand. Because again, what Starbucks is really selling, you know, they're not just selling coffee, they're selling an environment and they're selling an experience. They're selling friendly people who know your name when you come through the drive-through, who know your order when you walk up to the counter. Um, that is what Starbucks is selling. So that's just a really great example of a business that understands what it means to tell the story of their brand. Um, another great example, personally, I'm a huge fan of this uh, business is Chick-fil-A, right? If, I, if you're not a fan of Chick-fil-A, I just, I, 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 don't, I don't know what to 
say about that. Um, Chick-fil-A is great for a lot of reasons. Um, one of the reasons is that Chick-fil-A's brand isn't just chicken, right? Bojangles sells chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken sells chicken. Um, I think probably every fast food joint sells chicken right now. But Chick-fil-A's brand is excellent customer service, and they want people to have an excellent experience when they when they come through a Chick-fil-A, when they roll through the drive through or when they um, come into the store itself. So one of the things that's so interesting about Chick-fil-A is that when you scroll through their Instagram feed, you will actually see more faces of their enthusiastic, smiling team members than you will see pictures of chicken or chicken sandwiches. Because what Chick-fil-A is selling is that customer experience, right? I think we've all probably had situations where we've rolled through the drive through or walked up to the counter at a fast food restaurant and it feels like the person working there just is having a terrible day or they hate being there or they just, they're, they're upset that we're there because they don't want to um, maybe um, serve us in that moment. And so one of the things that Chick-fil-A is selling, one of the things that is just inter integral and key to their brand is their excellent customer service experience. So even though Chick-fil-A really isn't the healthiest, even though it's maybe some people would even say, hey, you know what, like Chick-fil-A isn't even the best or the tastiest. We will pay a little extra, right, for um, a chicken sandwich or um or a carton of fries because you just feel good when you leave you know it's 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 a great customer service experience and so you can see kind of the caption that was um that was created here this is from chick-fil-a's instagram uh chris a new guest had a hard time seeing the smile behind her mask the answer was simple a polaroid of smiles for each team member um thanks and then they tagged the location for making sure smiles are shared no matter what that I mean that is a perfect picture of telling the story of your brand and so that's one of the things I just want to challenge kind of everybody to think about it's sort of the the base right it's sort of the foundation of what we should be thinking about when we sort of step into social media when we launch into social media with our businesses with our organizations um is this telling your story understanding what your brand is um what you are uniquely offering customers what problem you're solving for them and doing your best to tell that story um so why social media why social media so 73 percent. this is wild 73 percent of all face or all of all active Facebook users in the United States use the platform daily. Every single day, 73% of all active Facebook users um, are on the platform. That is unreal. Um, and then 93% of all of uh, the active users in the United States are on there weekly, you know, at least a few times a week. And if, if that isn't like just a great picture of, of why social media, um, it, there, there's a, a tremendous opportunity here, um, a big opportunity. Uh, just another graph again, because I'm super visual, um, approximately 70% of all adults in the United States use social media on some level. So 70% of everyone 18 years and above use social media, some form of social media on some level level if we look specifically at facebook and instagram because they are kind of the big two youtube um, would also be considered a form of social media but in terms of interaction and um and the content that's put out facebook and instagram are kind of like the easiest sort of like barrier to entry um so if you look specifically at facebook and instagram i know sometimes it's easy to think this is just something that the young people are doing. And it's really not. Um, nearly 50% um, of, of individuals ages 30 to 49 um, are on Instagram, right? Um, and um, what is it there? 31%, 31% of people age 50 and above are also on Instagram. 
So nearly one in nearly one in three. So there's there there are people of all age groups that are very very active on social media and that are really taking advantage of the platform. With regards to some essential social platforms, so the top two, in my opinion, based on what I've seen and the data that I've kind of reviewed, um, the top two essential social media platforms for businesses or organizations currently are Facebook and Instagram. Kind of mentioned earlier, they're sort of the lowest barrier to entry. It's really easy to get into Facebook and Instagram. Um, with Facebook specifically creating a page for your business or your organization, um, it allows people to like your business or organization in addition to um, allowing them to leave a rating or a written review. This is incredibly powerful for better or worse. Um, if people have a great experience with your business, encourage them to leave a review on your Facebook page. Um, people really do look at those things and they make decisions about whether or not maybe they want to interact with your business or organization based on that many, many times. Um, with Facebook pages, uh, it also allows you uh, or it allows users to interact with and share your content. Um, sharing of content results in social proof, it results in trust, et cetera. You see the things that your friends share on Facebook. And so if there's a friend that you have that's sharing, you know, maybe something, a, a post that your organization or your business has posted, that immediately will get your attention. And so this also allows for future customers to investigate your business sort of before committing to business. And Facebook is a great platform for telling the story of your business or organization. I'm sorry if you guys can hear my two-year-old son just outside the door having a great time out there. I'm not sure what he's doing. Hopefully the house is not on fire. Um, Instagram uh, likewise allows you to tell your story um, through impactful imagery um, and through video. Facebook also allows you to do this, but Instagram is a little bit more media driven where Facebook um, is a little bit more, I'd say Facebook is a little bit more social driven in terms of content, uh, uh, content posting, um, uh, words, you know, you can't post on Instagram without posting an image or a video essentially. Um, an important thing to remember about Instagram is that their user base is still uh, predominantly younger, um, but nothing wrong with that. That over time will continue to get a little bit older as well as Facebook has. So one of the things that's really important uh, with social media is capturing attention, right? So one of the most valuable commodities that exists currently is someone's attention. I heard someone say this recently, and I thought it was really thought provoking because if you think about it, you know, there are people, there are businesses, there are different things that are vying for our attention all the time. If we're watching TV, there are commercials. If we're, if we're maybe on social media, there are um, advertisements. To have someone's attention is incredibly powerful, right? And so there's a couple different little tips here as it relates to capturing someone's attention. Um, one of the things that you want to do is something uh, that I've heard someone uh, use this, this sort of phrase before is to stop the scroll, right? You want to do everything you can to create content that's highly engaging, that's creative, and that stops the scroll for users, right? So this is, you, you don't necessarily want to post the same exact looking thing that everyone else is doing, you know, do something a little bit different, create some content that stands out. Because for those of you that are on social media, you probably know you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll. And then maybe you see something that catches your eye and you stop and think, oh, I'm going to look at that or I'm going to read that. And so what you ideally want to do as a business is to stop the scroll. Uh, the other thing that you want to do uh, with regards to capturing attention is to focus on quality over quantity. Um, and this has changed recently because one of the things that we were kind of always told with social media, you know, I'd say a year or two ago was post as often as possible every single day, post, 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 post. And so that's kind of changed because the algorithms have changed. So if any of you are on Instagram or Facebook, you may have seen this, right, where there may be someone that you're friends with, uh, that you interact with, and Facebook or Instagram might show you something that they posted two or three days ago, um, maybe that you haven't seen yet, but they posted it two or three days ago. It used to be a thing where like 
you would just see the most recent stuff and you would see the stuff that everybody was posting, right? Um, but what, what social media, specifically what Facebook and Instagram have started doing is that they have started showing you content that they feel is most relevant for you based on what you interact with. So that being said, you want to post material that is of a higher quality because there's a greater chance that people will interact with that quality content. And as they interact uh, with that content, it signals to Facebook and Instagram's algorithms, hey, um, Jason just uh, commented on Rotary's image that they posted last week. And so the next time that Rotary posts an image, we're definitely going to show that to Jason because this seems like content that Jason wants to see and interact with, if that makes sense. So focus on quality over quantity. Um, in fact, quantity can hurt you, right? If you're posting a ton, a ton, a ton of content and maybe that's not getting liked or shared as much, it may signal to the platform that maybe this isn't as relevant to some of these folks. And so we're not going to show this as much when they post. So quality over quantity. Just some final tips wrapping up here. One of the things that you might wanna consider with social media is paid advertising. You know, Facebook's ability to target customers based on specific demographics and location um, is it, really top notch. Um, they, they really have um, a great platform for you to be able to do that. And you can also retarget you, users who have visited your website with Facebook's tracking pixel. Um, you've probably experienced this before, right? Where you go and visit a website and then you're on Facebook and then you're on Instagram and it feels like that website is following you everywhere. And you're like, wait, I just went to that website yesterday and now I'm seeing an ad for that website. What's going on? They're, they're in my head, they're in my brain. It's because they put a tracking pixel on their website and they have said, we want to advertise to people who visited our website. Um, another just quick final tip is to maintain consistency, you know, circling back around to quality versus quantity. It's really not about posting as much as possible anymore. It's more about posting consistently, whether that's once or twice a week, um, once every two weeks, et, et cetera, you know, develop a realistic schedule and really do what you can to stick to that schedule. Um, for some organizations or businesses, it's not realistic to post every couple of days. Um, it's more realistic to post once a week or once every couple of weeks. Um, the other thing is this, and I think it probably goes without saying because we're talking about social media, but be social. You know, you would, um, you would think probably, you know, everybody knows this, um, but when someone leaves you a great review, thank them for leaving you a great review. You know, comment on that review. If someone comments on a photo or video, like it, um, like their comment, and then respond to their comment. Um, it's social media, right? So do everything that you can to be social and you quickly build a community of people who love everything about um, what your business or organization stands for. And so um, again, that's kind of a bird's eye view. It's, it's a very like 30,000 foot level. That's not drilling down into every little nook and cranny that there is about social media. There's a lot there, um, but just talking through the importance of social media and how much there, there really is a great opportunity for businesses and organizations to um, tell their story, to get the message out about what they're about and to really inspire people to be involved and support. So that's all I have as far as my presentation goes. Um, thank you guys so much for allowing me to do that. Uh, really, really honored to, uh, to do that. Brian, thank you so much. Uh, a lot of information and you know, a lot of our Rotarians, yeah, you see a lot of applause out there. Uh, a lot of our Rotarians are also entrepreneurs, you know, involved with organizations as well. And, um, and it's, it's useful information, you know, for them to, to take back, you know, to their businesses, to their organizations. So again, thank you. Uh, does anybody, if you guys have questions for Brian, we have just a couple minutes. If you'll unmute yourself, uh, I am, he's shaking his head yes, but he'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Hey, Brian, it's TJ. Hey, TJ, how are you? I'm great. Uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed all that you had to say today. So I'd like to take that to my employees. Is there any way um, uh, the PowerPoint or whatever you were using there for your slides um, that I might share that with them? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what I can do, um, maybe Hope, I can email that to you and you could shoot an email out to everybody and then they could just use it as they would, you know, as they would like to use that. 
Absolutely. I will do that. Perfect. Thank you. You're well, you're welcome. Okay. This is David. This is David Williams. So I want to know why you didn't ask me to do that program. <laughs> Well, well, Jason Toggle's the one that set it up, but I, 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 I don't I hope know. He, I hope he knows that's the biggest joke he's ever been told. Uh, <laughs> uh, it needs to last more than three minutes. The program lasts more than three minutes, David. Uh, Doc, Doc, we know that you're social and you're on social media. Um, I wouldn't have three minutes. <laughs> Hey, I'll, I'll add one thing, um, you know, part of the reason we did this presentation was just that, um, you know, like I said, Rotary, uh, one of the things they ask us to do every year uh, for every uh, club is to do a presentation about social, me social media and its uh, value. And so uh, I guess with, you know, with me being public image chair, it's a good opportunity to invite you all if you haven't already. Uh, liked our uh, Facebook page or our Instagram page uh, for Thomasville Rotary uh, to go and do that. Uh, we try to post on that about once a week uh, with updates and different different things that are going on in our club or Rotary International. Uh, and here's the thing, and Brian was kind of, uh, he talked a lot about this today. One of, the, one of the things that Rotary we want to do is to communicate who we are. Um, I didn't know a whole lot about Rotary until uh, someone invited me to, to attend a meeting and then I was invited back and back and I started to learn more and more that well, it's not just some social club. It's, uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's an organization that's passionate about helping and serving uh, the communities in the world. And so uh, there's a story to be told and we want uh, the people of Thomasville to know what Thomasville Rotary is doing for this community. And so one of the best ways we can do that is to when we share when we post something on social media for you guys uh, to share it um, because then it starts to branch out of our organization. Your friends see it and people start to realize, oh, okay, that's what Rotary is. So um, just want to extend that invitation. Uh, it's a powerful tool to tell the story of who we are and what we do. Uh, if you haven't already liked it uh, and joined our Facebook page or our Instagram. Do that, and then we'd love for you to share the content that we post. Thank you, Jason, and and thank you for the work you do. You you've really been very proactive with our uh, with our social media this year, and we appreciate not only that you brought you know Brian in for a wonderful program today, but that you're also you know playing such an instrumental role in keeping our social media updated. Um, 